Hi there. Now, in the first part of this question, we were given that f of x and g of x, these two polynomials up here, had a common factor of x minus 2. And we had to show that a equaled minus 4, let's just underline that, and go on to find the value of b. Well, we found out that b equaled 3. Okay. Now, in the second part, it's saying using these values of a and b, factorize f of x fully and show that f of x and g of x have two common factors. So if you'd like to have a go at this and haven't done so already, I'll just give you a moment to pause the video. OK, welcome back then if you had a go. Now, let's just put down what f of x would be if we were to substitute our values of a being minus 4 and b equals 3 into it. What we'd have is x cubed then, and then it would be minus 4 minus 3, which is minus 7 times x, so we've got minus 7x. And then plus 2b, well b was 3, so that's going to be plus 2 3s, which are 6. And we know that it's got a common factor of x minus 2, so we can just say that this is going to be the same as x minus 2 multiplied by what would be a quadratic factor. Something then starting with x squared, because x times x squared would give us that x cubed. We don't know what the x term would be, so I'm just going to call that plus bx. And for the constant on the end, it has to be minus 3, because minus 2 multiplied by minus 3 would give us that plus 6. Okay? Now, I can work out what this x term is by considering, for instance, terms in x. And if I looked at the terms in x, what are we going to have? We're going to have, when we expand this bracket, we're going to have x times the minus 3. That would be minus 3x. Let's just put it up here, minus 3x. Where else would we get an x term from? Well, it would be the minus 2 times the bx. So that's going to give me minus 2bx. And they would be the only two x terms that I would generate out of this expansion. And yet, they've got to come to minus 7x. So I'm going to say that this equals minus 7x. And so, therefore, if I was to add 7x to both sides and add 2bx to both sides, I'm going to have 7x minus 3x, which is therefore 4x, and that's going to equal 2bx. And if I divide both sides by 2 and x, then I get b equaling 4x over 2x. The x's cancel, and 4 divided by 2 leaves me with b equaling 2. So that's how I would be thinking about getting b. There is another way that I can work out that quadratic factor, and that is by algebraic division. I'll show you that in a moment. But what we've got then is that this is equal to x minus 2 then multiplied by x squared. We've seen that b is 2, so that's going to be plus 2x minus 3. And I can factorize the quadratic factor. It breaks down into two brackets. And inside here, we're going to have an x and an x. And then it's going to be plus 3 and minus 1. Check it out. You'll get your x squared. You'll get minus x plus 3x, which is 2x. And then 3 times minus 1 is the minus 3. Now, I did say that you could get this quadratic factor by an alternative way, which is algebraic long division. So you could divide x minus 2 okay, into f of x, x cubed minus 7x plus 6 in other words. So just take a moment out to do it this way as well. Okay, 
it might suit some people to do it this way. You've got to be careful here though because what we've got is no x squared term. So we just fill that space with 0x squared and then we've got minus 7x plus 6. If you're unsure about algebraic long division do check it out on my website. There's tutorials there. So in the usual way, we just say, what do we multiply x by to get x cubed? Well, it's going to be x squared. Multiply x squared now with x minus 2. You get x squared times x, which is x cubed. x squared times minus 2 is minus 2x squared. And we now subtract these two from one another to get the remainder. x cubed minus x cubed is 0. And then you've got 0x squared minus minus 2x squared which is going to be plus 2x squared and then we bring down the next term which in this example is minus 7x and we start all over again. What do we multiply this x by to give 2x squared? Well it's going to be 2x so we put plus 2x there and now we do 2x times x minus 2. 2x times x then is 2x squared. 2x times minus 2 is minus 4x and again we subtract to find out what the remainder is. 2x squared minus 2x squared is 0 minus 7x minus minus 4x leaves us with minus 3x. Bring down the next term which in this case is plus 6 and we start again. What do you multiply x by to give minus 3x? Well, it's minus 3. Minus 3 now times x minus 2 gives us minus 3x plus 6. Take away to work out what that remainder is, and we see that it is 0. No remainder telling us that x minus 2 was a factor, and you can see it checks out with what we've got here, x squared plus 2x minus 3 in the quotient here. So an alternative way that you might prefer. Okay, well, we also had to go on and show that g of x would factorize, and it has a common factor other than x minus 2. Okay, so it's either going to be x plus 3 or x minus 1. So what we could do is factorize it again by this technique, or... You could do another trick, which I'll show you later. Let's just do it this way, okay? So we'll take g of x. I'll just put here now g of x, okay? We need to substitute our values of a and b into it first of all. And so if we substitute those values in, we've got the first term anyway is 3x cubed. Second term is plus x squared. But then we've got 5ax, a being minus 4, is going to give us minus 20x. And then you've got 4 times b, so 4 threes are 12. Now, we know that x minus 2 is a common factor. So x minus 2, and again, it's going to be multiplied by a quadratic factor. Only in this one, it's got to start with 3x squared because x times 3x squared will give us that 3x cubed. Then we're going to have an x term, which I'll call bx, and then we need our constant on the end. And it has to give us plus 12 when we multiply minus 2 with this value. Well, it's got to be minus 6 then. Okay? Now, we just need to get the value of b, and we can do this by comparing, say, the x terms like I did here. Or you could even do it by comparing, say, x squared terms. I'm going to go with x squared terms just to make it different from what we did here. So if we compare the x squared terms, where are we going to get them from? We're going to have, first of all, x times the bx. So that's going to be bx squared. So we've got bx squared. We're also going to get an x squared term now when we do minus 2 times 3x squared. That's going to be minus 6x squared. And they're going to be the only two x squared terms we generate. And so I compare it with what we've got here, which is 
equal to x squared. Okay? So, what does it mean that b must be to leave us with x squared? Well, it's just got to be a 7. 7x seven squared minus 6x squared would give us x squared. So, therefore, we can readily see that b must equal 7. So, that's how I would think about then working out what b is. Okay, by comparing the x squared terms. Check it out for yourself. Compare the x terms. Do it something like I did here. You should still find that you get b equals 7. So what have we got then? We've got the x minus 2 being multiplied then with 3x squared plus bx, but b we've seen is 7, so that's plus 7x, and then minus the 6. And we can factorise the quadratic factor, two brackets, and what will we have in there? Well, one of them is going to be a 3x, and the other's got to be an x. And then as for the constants, one here is going to be minus 2, and the other one's going to be plus 3. So you've got 3x squared, you've got plus 9x minus 2x is the 7x, and minus 2 times 3 is the minus 6. So when I look at both of these two factorised versions for f of x and g of x, not only do they have x minus 2 then as a common factor, but they've got x plus 3 as a common factor. So let's just put this down here that it follows that x plus 3 okay, is a common factor. Now I did say that there was another way that we could work out what another factor would be. And if we just come down here, okay, that way was that we could use the factor theorem by guessing what one of those factors would be. It would either be x plus 3 or x minus 1. Well, if we use the factor theorem and let x equal minus 3, we could have checked it out. We could have said g of minus 3 and hope that we get 0 when we substitute minus 3 for x into here. If we do, then x plus 3 would be a common factor. If we do it, we've got 3 times minus 3 all cubed. So 3 times minus 3 all cubed. And then we've got plus x squared. Well, x is minus 3, so we've got minus 3 all squared. Minus 20 times x, minus 20 then times minus 3, and then plus the 12. And if you do check this out, you do in fact get 0. So therefore, if that were the case, x plus 3 would have been a factor, and it would have been a common factor of both of these two functions. If you had tried g of 1, you'd have found that you didn't get 0, so it wouldn't have been a factor. So I hope that's given you all different ways that you could possibly approach this particular problem.